G'day, fellas, and welcome to Patch Day. Today, we're going to be going through the patch notes for Season 7. It is upon us. It is happening. It is not long until we get to actually touch it as well. If you haven't been made aware, we've only got ourselves six days, eight hours and 18 minutes as of recording this uh, to go in this Season 6. So if you haven't already, make sure you're climbing up the ladder. Try and pick yourself up some of those cool cosmetics. Let's get into it. We're going to try and focus on the meat and potatoes, the balance, the bug fixes, and then we're also just going to go through everything else. So we've got ourselves a new event that's on the way. This is going to be happening in May. That's that's quite a while away. Spring tournaments, it's called. Some some uh, some achievements to pick up here, some rewards to get. We can take a look here as well. This is going to be ranked season seven. We've got all of our rewards. Uh, if you uh, if you finish, which ones? What's the best color? I, I, see, this is the problem. I feel like gold is the best color, man. It just it it looks so nice. I don't know, Conqueror's pretty cool. They're all pretty cool. And we got some new portraits as well coming through. Little little crown. I feel like the platinum one is definitely the best one though. Look at this. Compared to the Conqueror one. Oh yeah, that's way much, way much better. Is that even? I don't think that's English. Anyway, map pool rotation. So we've got Dry Arabia. It's already in there. Cliffside already in there. Rocky River is making a comeback. Forts. I'm not going to lie. I like Forts. Gorge. High View. Oh God, High View is coming back. Danube River, Lippany, and Four Lakes. Okay, so if I'm banning things, and I am, Four Lakes is going to get banned. Danube River is going to get banned. What else do you ban? Like maybe Rocky River? Even Rocky River. The Rocky River is not that bad. Maybe Forts? But even Forts is fun. I like Forts. We like Forts. And for team ranked map, what have you guys got? Dry Arabia, Cliffside, Rocky River, Prairie making a comeback. Love to see it. Gorge, Hill and Dale, Lippany, Migration. <laughs> have you guys seen Migration? That's a fun map. Oh, you got, that's going to be good in team games. That's going to be chaos. And water holes. All right, let's get down into the build spotlight. Crossplay is now available on PC and console. You can join your console and PC friends and adversaries on the battlefield with crossplay. That is exciting. Team Ranked is also now available on console. You can jump into Team Ranked mode on console, uh, I'm assuming, as of this patch. Condensed victory of... Oh my lord, they've actually done it! We've created an alternative version of win conditions that take... Oh, oh, <laughs> they said the technology wasn't there. I didn't think it was going to be happening until 2063. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at it. It's beautiful. What? Please don't tell me this is just for Xbox, right? Like, th this, is, this, is for, this is for us, right? This is for the big boys. Oh, my Lord. Look at this. Look at this. We got to compare the pair. Come on, come on, come on. Everybody, get in here. Quickly, have a look at this. <laughs> we have been asking for this since day one. I have had words on my screen that have taken up 46% of it that I just quite honestly didn't like. Look at the size of that. It's, it's not 46% of the screen. It's pretty big though. And it's just unnecessary, right? Like I know the rules of Age of Empires. I've played thousands of games. I don't need to see these things up here. And the fact that they've just gone and they've condensed them. Oh, my chef's kiss. Thank you, developers. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> let's get, let's keep going. <laughs> this is, this is, uh, wow, dude. As I, I, I don't, uh, I've done a couple of takes of this, uh, just doing the start. One of the things I mentioned in an earlier take is the devs did not tell me that this patch was going live. I woke up to a message from Cow and he's like, yeah, did you see they fixed this? And I'm like, what do you mean they fixed that? What are you talking about? And then I checked and I saw in the announcements, they've, they've, they put the patch notes up. It's like, oh, okay. Thanks devs. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> Jeez, quick match updates. A nomad game mode was added as a new option and comes with several improvements. A new free for all option has been added, allowing you to queue for eight player free for all matches. Quick match free for all matches are played using the new Dominion win condition. Dude, I'm saying it now. Is this the best patch we've ever seen? Is this the best patch we've ever seen? Just let's go through that again. The Nomad Game Mad, the, sorry, the Nomad Game Mode was added as a new option and comes with several several improvements. I f didn't, did we not already have Nomad in here? I, f I feel like didn't we already have we already have Nomad? But is, is this have I just got? Have I just is, is this just a mod that I've got? I thought they already added it. Added as a new option comes with several improvements. I, okay, maybe I've just got the mod. New free-for-all option has been added. No, I swear they added Nomad before and they were like talking it up and everyone's like, we've had Nomad since day one. The, the, the mod has put it in for us. Anyway, uh, new free-for-all option has been added, allowing you to queue for eight-player free-for-all matches. Uh, I'm, 
is this like for quick match? A quick match free for all matches are played using the new Dom Dominion win condition. Okay, cool. This is exciting. I, I, I wonder if they talk more about this. A note on leaderboards and hidden ELO. Uh, free for all will have a new leaderboard and track your hidden ELO separately. This means that matchmaking will result in more balanced games over time. In FFA mode, the winner is the only player to gain ELO and all other players lose ELO based on an even split equal to the amount of ELO that the winner gains. So as an example, uh, if the winner gets 49 ELO, then everybody else loses seven. Additionally, Nomad mode will share a leaderboard with standard mode. That means that when you queue for Nomad for the first time, you'll be more likely to be matched with players closer to your skill level. All right, so let's just talk a little bit about this because this is so exciting. I am so, so excited because it, I, I've got an announcement that's going to be coming up shortly. Um, it, it, uh, it's not quite Outback Octagon 3, I'll say that much, but it's a free-for-all themed announcement, and I think you guys are going to like it a lot. Um, and part of that is going to be what's going on right here. And I, I just can't wait for it. Uh, but this is a, a really good thing because basically it means that you're not going to have teaming because the guy who comes second will, will never get points. And I, I can already hear people saying, yeah, but Drongo, you're just going to get friends that queue up together and they're just going to team up and then they're going to trade wins. You know, I, I win one game and they win the next game and then I win this game and then they win the next game. Yeah, look, that, that you might be right. Uh, but there's not much that we can do about that other than... I guess m maybe something to do with dodging because there's no guarantee that they're going to get in the same lobby. Uh, so I guess that's a thing. But I mean, to be fair, like they probably will. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm sure that we'll... I'm sure that'll become an issue in time, all right? Anyway, Nomad improvements. Starting villagers increase from three to five. This is a good change. The villager starting distance is increased. That's a good change. So basically, uh, it, it means that your spawns are going to be more loose. Holy Roman Empire Prelate. Juicy Legacy Official uh, and Mongols Gur are granted upon Town Center construction and not at the start of the match. Great changes. English Village Bows and Chinese Villager Build Speed bonus are deactivated at the start of the game, reactivated upon Town Center construction. Joan of Arc Civilization starts with three villages plus Joan of Arc. Well, that, that's... So everyone else gets five, but you get three plus Joan. But I guess Joan does build faster, but still that feels like terrible. And Order of the Dragon starts with four villages. I don't know. I, I, I feel like maybe just reducing Joan of Arcs. Oh, but I guess because you're building the town center, that's going to give her a whole bunch of XP as well. I, d I don't know, but I, I, I still feel like maybe just like, just put the same thing in here. Like Joan of Arc can't collect experience until the TC is built. Anyway, look, uh, it's just going to feel bad playing Joan of Arc because you're going to be so much slower. New Dominion win condition. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Enabled and disabled in custom games via the game mode win condition section. So that's over here, the game mode. So you'd go in and you'd go click Dominion. Compatible with standard Empire Wars and Nomad game modes, as well as other win condition types. Players start with a monarch that must be protected at all costs. Losing a Monarch leads to the instant elimination of the owning player. Now, I would just say Dominion win condition is the win condition, or is the free-for-all matches are played using the new Dominion win condition. This is the default. Eliminating an enemy Monarch grants plus 50 maximum population. If a player is eliminated by landmark victory, their Monarch remains on the field. Wow. Eliminating a neutral Monarch grants continues to grant 50 maximum population. So if you leave the game, if you're like, nah, I'm so annoyed with this game, your Monarch will remain on the field and someone can just go in there and snipe you. Monarchs have two primary abilities. Number one, sprint, temporarily move faster. Number two, treason, reveal the location of enemy Monarchs and ping them on the minimap. Monarchs are visible on the minimap with a crown icon. AI players will garrison their Monarch into a safe building. When loading into a game with no other players or AI, the Dominion win condition will automatically deactivate and not spawn a Monarch at the start of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, it is incredible to witness this Outback Octagon. It's, it's here. It, it is actually here. And I can, oh man, we, we're going to have a ladder for Outback Octagon. It, it, but I mean, it's not Outback Octagon, it's Dominion. But I mean, this is how exciting is this? This is actually insane. I can't believe this right now. 
Wow, this this looks so good. And I, I, I'm just going to say right now, I, I didn't get to see this at all. I, I didn't know if this was what they were going to. I, I'd kind of heard rumors that this is what they were thinking about, but I had no confirmation. And the fact that they've pr pretty much put it in one for one is amazing. And it just goes to show, you know, how well the community did. Because I, I just want to state that when it came to Outback Octagon and the rules for that, that wasn't me. That was people making suggestions. That was people saying, hey, we think this would work better. We think that would work better. And it obviously, it was a formula that really worked and the, de the devs have loved it as well. So, you know, huge shout out to the community for, for putting forward those suggestions. Quality of life improvements. Oh, let's move on. Walls under construction can now be converted into gates via an ability on the placed... Hold on. Walls under construction can now be converted into gates via an ability on the placed blueprint. Conversion to a gate can happen at any time before the wall section is finished construction, after which it's no longer possible to convert directly and a villager must be used. The cost of the conversion is the difference between the cost of the wall and the gate. So does this mean if I draw a line of walls and then I click on a segment and I go convert to gate, it, the villager will just come along and automatically build the gate? So I, I, the reason why this is really good, okay, just to explain this change, because I know some people might be looking at this and thinking, Drongo, what, what, what's this all about? Like, this doesn't make sense to me. Let me explain, okay? Let's say I, I'm i playing against a Juicy Legacy and they're going to do a Zhuganu rush against me. So I want to start walling up. Oh my God, why am I playing Nomad? <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going <laughs> I'm, I'm to wall, right? The problem is I want to put a gate on this wall, but I have to now wait for my villager to go out here, start building that. Get out of here. I'm walling over here. I'm, I'm walling here. <laughs> hey, come on. That was pretty good. Uh, and then I can put a gate on it then, but then I have to rebuild the wall. So I've wasted the wood for the wall and then I have to waste that, that time. Whereas now I don't have to do that. And it basically just allows you as a player to have less APM and still achieve the same result. So this is a really good change. When ungarrisoning from a building, units will exit the building from the location closest to the rally point direction. That's that's a good change and something that, that will once again reduce the gap between the higher level players and the lower level players because top level players are already doing this uh, through the TC pop mechanic uh, and now it won't matter as much. That's a, that's a great change. Gameplay, AI. All right. Oh my gosh, look at the amount of AI changes. Let's Do we go through it quickly? I, I'm kind of tempted just to move on. If, if you want to take a look at this, I'll leave a link in the description of where you can look at the notes uh, because... I don't really play a lot of AI games outside of just practicing stuff. All right. Audio, improved simplified Chinese voices. Wonderful. Xbox console, Manjanique, weapons, toggles are now correctly displayed. Let's go to general. Shorefish can no longer be permanently removed when placing structures on them and will automatically return when the building is deleted or destroyed. What does that mean? They will automatically return when the building is deleted or destroyed. Is, is it saying that shorefish can no longer be permanently removed? Ah, uh, I get it. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. So basically, if if we, if we go into a game, and I'll try my best not to explain everything right now, but let's let's go Himayama, which I think is Himayama missing from the next map pool. You, you know, I, can I just say it would be nice if they told us the, what like the current map pool is and then what, what the new map pool is going to be. That'd be really nice. Um, just because, you know, I, I, I like Himayama. Himayama is a really, really good map. Um, but basically what you can do, uh, is you can go into a, into a game and let's say on Himayama, your opponent, oh, I, I thought I revealed it. Let's say your opponent is expanding into this pond in the middle. So what you can do is you can actually get your walls and just draw a little wall like this and you just walk up to it and you just do that. And then you can delete the wall and the fish is gone. So basically what this prevents you from doing is that. Um, and it, it seems like if you put a dock over the top of it, you will still like, you have to wait for it to be destroyed. But, yeah. So, th th this basically just fixes people griefing, which is a good change. Fix an issue where villagers seeking shelter would sometimes fail to choose the nearest available outpost for shelter. This has been a common issue. That's a good fix. When un unloading units from a garrison, they'll now exit on the side closest to their destination. So, this is another thing that, that you can technically do. So, as an example, let's say I want to get to this tree. I'm going to right-click, hit G, and then press C on the town center, and they will pop out there. And I can do the same thing over here, and they will always do that. But th that that's quite complex, right? Uh, it, it, it takes a, a fair bit of APM to do that. So, this is a good change that just naturally uh, is going to, to help out. Um, it's now easier to target a live animal with a villager when the animal overlaps a construction plant. Oh, that is, that is so hard, man. Trying to build these 
and then trying to click trying to click these oh my lord or if you ever try and uh, build a town center with on a pack of deer like <laughs> good luck with that one trying to click those deer great change again Fix an exploit where monks could duplicate relics when removing them from monasteries. Good change. Fix an issue where lightweight beams would not reduce construction times for some sieves. Cool. Previously, if a siege unit lost sight of a building it was attacking, it would go idle. Now it will move closer to regain vision and resume its attack. This is really, really good. And this is something that quite often happened. Um, so this is this is a great change. It, was, it would be so annoying when you'd have three, four trebuchets that were attacking a keep. And all of a sudden you might lose your out, outpost and now they don't have line of sight. And now all of a sudden they stopped attacking. So really, really good. Fixed a bug where deer would get stuck together after colliding. Landmarks no longer retain their garrison arrows after being destroyed and repaired. Wait, landmarks? Oh, their garrison arrows. Yeah, oh, this has been a bug for a while. I remember we did a casted game. I think it was Salami who actually... I don't think he... Did he play against someone who used it or abused it? I don't know if it was intentional or not, but yeah, it, it was noticeable. Now, if a siege tower or ram containing units passes over a stamped building, it will not cancel the building. Wait, what? If a siege tower or ram containing units passes over a stamped building it will not cancel the building i don't know what that means does it mean like if, if i put a building down like like this and then i drive a ram over it with units inside the building will cancel is that is that what they're saying i don't have cheats on do i yeah Th uh, thanks uh, when a player is defeated, their units will now fully cease their current actions when they turn neutral. See, this is a good change again. And this is a really good change that will go hand in hand with uh, the Dominion game mode. Just mainly because one of the things that happened is if you had a whole bunch of villagers that were gathering gold and you surrendered, those villagers would keep gathering the gold from the gold vein and that gold doesn't go anywhere. Obviously, you, you've, you've left the game, but the villagers keep gathering. Uh, so that's a really good change. Monks ordered to capture a sacred site will now remain until it's captured before executing cute. What? No way! Really? Dude, this is actually really cool. They, they... Wow. They're really making it a lot... They're reducing... And this is a good thing, right? They're, they're bringing the skill ceiling down quite a lot. Uh, and, and I like this. This is such a smart move because it basically means it's going to be easier for you as a, as a player to go, okay, I want you to pick up this relic and then I want you to walk to this sacred site. And then once you've captured the sacred site, I want you to walk back home and drop the relic off. You can do that now. You can't do that now. You have to wait for the sacred site. Then you have to be cognizant enough to go back to the sacred site, bring it back. It's just going to make it so much easier because you can front load all these commands now. Fixed a bug where villagers would idle instead of returning to work when their previous job was gathering from a boar. Good to see this boar bug fix has been fixed. Explosive ship kills are now counted in post-game stats. The post-game stats now correctly reflect units lost when a transport ship sinks. Units inside a ram or siege tower inside a transport ship will now die if the ship is destroyed. <laughs> what? Sorry. I, 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 have we seen that before? Yeah, actually, I do remember seeing it. I think it was on uh, in, a, in a private Discord. Someone put... So you basically get like 10 rams and you send the rams to the transport ship. And at the same time, you put the units in the rams and then the rams go full into the transport ship. And basically you can have like an entire army inside one transport ship. It's kind of wild. Fix the crash that would occur when exiting the Acre mission. The inner jiffy cheat now applies to Ayubid cavalry and Gulam units. I like that it didn't apply before. It was like, no, no, you have to wait the full time for Gulams and Ayubid cavalry. Uh, th this is the cheat that basically I, I just tried to type in. It, it increases your rates of gathering and building by 100 100x, not 100%, 100x. Uh, fixed a crash that could happen when playing on canal when, when with two teams of unequal play account. Fixed an issue where uh, water borders, water borders. Hold on, what, are, what, what, what kind of video is this? Fixed an issue where water borders were harsh or jagged on some maps. Uh, look, I think naturally, if, if you are a water border, you are probably harsh or jagged quite naturally. And I, I'm surprised that this is a fix. I feel like that's probably intended. Fix an issue with, with forts. Is, is it wrong to joke about that? No, it's the children. Fix an issue with forts where the wrong size of map was being used for team games. This caused starting bases to overlap with enemies and allies in rare cases. Fix an issue with Black Forest, where the wrong size was used for solo and team games. This caused the middle lanes to be generated incorrectly. Fixed an issue with, with migration with the wrong size. Okay, fixed a crash that could occur when entering a match. And fixed a crash that could occur when switching control groups quickly while mousing over the command card. I know a lot of people are going to be really happy with this. I think Beastie, uh, Demo, Zerton, 
uh, th there's quite a few of them that have been having this bug. Uh, so th this is this is a great change. UI. All right, this is always fun. Fix a bug where if a party host leaves, the new host would not be able to invite new players. Fix an issue where Codex items were incorrectly clipped. Add functionality for players to block chat communication and see who they've blocked. Player stats can now be viewed on the quick match screen. Fix an issue that prevented players from scrolling the game list page under certain circumstances. The Byzantine selection card background pattern is no longer missing. Wonderful. Uh, and fix an issue where using shift plus clicking on an idle working village buttons would not select all idle villages or villages working on that specific resource. Okay. Achievements, challenges, and masteries. I'm just going to move over that. Hopefully, uh, if that's relevant to you, pause the video here or go click that link. And now let's get through to the good stuff. It's time. The meat, the potatoes. Ladies and gentlemen, 20 minutes into the video, we now get to the good stuff. Ram health increased from 340 to 370. A good change. Ram build time decreased from 80 to 70 seconds. A good change. Workshop ram train time reduced from 40 to 35 seconds. Uh... Probably didn't need it. Mangonel and Nesta B's health reduced from 140 to 130. This is a great change. It means Springles will now one-shot them. Sprinkled bonus damage versus Siege increased from 60 to 65. This is, again, a good change. And basically gives them an, a little bit of insulation against repairing. Um, so that's really good. You should be able to two-shot Nesta B's and Mangos without any hassle now. Bombard, Great Bombard, and Cannon ranged armor has been increased from 35 to 40. developers you guys looked at the most recent patch and you said you know what the great bombard needs the great bombard needs to be buffed it's not strong are you come on come on hey guys come on previously some ungarrisonable units buildings and transports displayed each garrison weapon as individual weapons and have been merged for a cleaner weapon information card good change corrected some issues where elite army tactics and incendiary arrows were not affecting all intended units okay cool Stone earned from relics and pagodas. Re no! Reduced by 50% and food wood has been increased in, in its place. Now generates 100 gold, 62 food, 62 wood, and 25 stone. So you always want to be putting your relics in pagodas where possible. That is still really good. Corrected an issue where loaded battering rams were missing the unload garrison ability for HRE and o OOTD. And corrected an issue where merchant guilds could be researched twice for French and Joan of Arc. That is the unique technology that gave your traders one gold every six seconds. Civilization specific changes. All right, let's get into it. Fresh foodstuffs. Moved from the town center to the mill. Camel Archer cost reduced from 180 food to 170 food. Fertile Crescent wood discount increased from 25 to 30%. And Spice Roads upgrade now correctly modifies gold income for all traders. The Abbasid have been out of favor for a while. This is going to help them a huge amount. With fresh foodstuffs going from the town center to the mill, it means that you're going to have an extra villager early on. But not only that, you're not going to have to make the decision of when do I get fresh foodstuffs. It's just going to be, I'm going to get fresh foodstuffs because it's in the mill. And that makes it so much easier to get. The Camel Archer being reduced on food, this helps it out a slight amount. I think the unit still fundamentally, it, it's got very niche uses. Maybe you get one or two out early if you're playing a bit of Feudal Age. In the late game, maybe you add a couple in as well. But overall, this unit doesn't seem particularly, you know, impactful in the current meta. Fertile Crescent which is the economic wing. So if we just jump into it quickly and go into learn, it's House of Wisdom, Fertile Crescent here, reduces the cost of economic buildings and houses by 25%. That's gone up to 30%. Slight increase, uh, helps out a lot with the farm transition. This is a good change, makes their mid game a bit stronger. And then Spice Road upgrades now correctly modifies gold income for all traders. So that's under the trade wing down here. And that's going to be your Imperial Age uh, one. So... It's uh, not as important, but I think overall these changes are definitely in the right direction for the Abbasid Dynasty. Uh, and hopefully they address its issues in the early game with fresh foodstuffs and in the mid game with Fertile Crescent. This is uh, this is great. Good job, devs. Abids. Tower of the Sultan. Oh no. No longer has the Ram melee vulnerability. Oh lord. Build time reduced from 200 to 140 seconds. And garrison units increase the movement speed for each unit. Oh, God. Don't tell me we're going to have little bagatties going around again. Oh, Lord. Atabag supervision and biology are now multiplicatively. Multiplicative. Multiplicative. <laughs> that's a fun word. Uh, okay. That's cool. So they're going to stack on top of each other. 
Um, whereas before they would add on top of each other, now they're going to multiply on top of each other. Cool. Corrected an issue where Desert Raiders' ranged weapon was not fully benefiting from their Golden Age 5 attack speed bonus. Okay. I think overall for the Ayubids, they're pretty strong at the moment. There's no real nerf here to them. In fact, if anything, there's a bit of a buff, but it's for an aspect of the civilization that is not used, that being the Tower of the Sultan, that being Atabeg Supervision. So I think these are good changes. I'm just a little bit worried about their power level because it is quickly approaching 9,000 and we know what happens after that. Rest in peace. Uh, we know what happens after that. Anyway, let's get on. So yeah, I, I think overall for the Ayubids, like the, these are... If I, if I like, if we had to give a rating to the Abbasid dynasty, we would say like this is this is a ten out of ten. The Ayyubids, this is like probably a, a seven or eight out of ten. I, I would have liked a little nerf in here for them. Uh, Byzantines, oh, oh oh lord, Byzantines, Jesus. All right, Chirusophon cost reduced from two hundred wood, one hundred gold to two hundred wood, sixty gold. Okay, not bad. And the health increase from two eighty to three ten. That's kind of in line with the the ram changes. The ranged armor has been increased from thirty to fifty. Good change. Uh, that's going to make it a lot less uh, vulnerable to uh, hand cannoneers. And Chirosophon bonus damage versus walls increased uh, from zero to five. Okay, I don't know how much that actually changes their their damage. Uh, the first mercenary contract choice is now free and instant, saving a hundred olive oil and twenty seconds of reach to research time. Okay, that all right. Veteran mercenary upgrade cost reduced from 100 food 250 gold to 50 food 125 gold and the re research time reduced from 60 to 30 seconds lament and I shield wall damage reduced from 40 to 30 that's a great change mangano emplacement damage reduced from 8 to 7 good change corrected an issue where mercenary sapahi and mercenary camel riders would receive gold from expilatorius upgrade when killing villagers i feel like that's okay I feel like that shouldn't be a thing. I feel like Expilatores should give extra gold for killing villagers, even if it's mercenary, you know, camel riders or sapahi. Oh, uh, that's a hot take, I know, but anyway. Uh, and Greek Fire Projectiles help text now mentions that patches of Greek Fire can't stack. This is a good... Uh, this is very relevant. Okay, so overall, Kyrosophon buffs are in line with the RAM changes, so I think those are definitely great. This is an interesting one, because at the moment, I think Byzantines are quite a decent civilization. Now, granted, you do need a PhD to play them, right? Like, e even for me, uh, I'm a Conqueror 3 player. I still don't play them because I... S and uh, keep in mind, I, I play the Chinese, right? But the Byzantines, to me, they are still very complex. And I feel like it's it's realistically a Conqueror 4 Civ only. Or if you want to play team games, then it's fine there. Uh, but in 1v1, definitely a Conqueror 4 civilization. Um this is going to push their strength quite high because now not only are you saving 20 seconds, you've also got that extra 100 olive oil. Um, so in a patch of berries, if we bring out... Can we can we bring out the notepad, Drongo? Let's get the notepad out right now. Um, so you, you get 6 times uh, 250 is your, your starting berries um, and you get 50% of that, which means that you're getting 1,500 divided by 2 equals 750 olive oil. Um, you also start with an extra 100 olive oil, so that makes 850 olive oil. Uh, and remember that when it comes to your mercenary contracts, you've got three different ones to choose from. Um, so if we just quickly jump into the Byzantines and take a look at their mercenary house. So the first one's the Keshik, which is going to cost you 400. So now, have a look at this. Okay, 400 times 2 equals 800. So now, I can actually get two sets of Keshiks because I have 850 olive oil, whereas before I could only get one set of Keshiks. Okay, so that, that's that's your first one. Longbows. These guys are a bit more expensive. I think 450. So 450. Uh, that's going to equal 900. So you can't afford that. And then your javelin throwers as well. What's that? 460. Um, so that's just off your starting patch, okay? Uh, and you've got to remember that there are other factors in play. Like you, you can also look to... Um, to go for your Grand Winery, which is a very common landmark here, which is going to give you an extra 60% olive oil on these numbers here, uh, and then further change that. But I, I think the biggest point in, in this is realistically that you now get these mercenaries faster, 20 seconds faster. You just click the contract and that's it. Um, and that's a big deal because it means that you're going to have 20 seconds earlier on your javelins, 20 seconds earlier on, the, on your longbows, on your Kashyyyks. That might not seem like a lot but i promise you that really will start to add up um on top of that mercenary uh veterancy 
this is another great change. And I think if anything, this is just going to drive people to looking for a bit more map control with Byzantines to try and get those berries. Um, there's the potential that maybe people even look to try and start sniping enemy berries away. I really wouldn't be surprised if we saw that. Um, Lament Knight Shield Wall Reduction. This is a great change in line with exactly uh, where where it should be. Um, I, I, I think that this should be okay. 30% um, seems reasonable. Um, I, I'd love to see what the numbers are for, for archer kills, but this is definitely in the right direction. Manganel emplacement, once again, Manganel emplacement is, is very, very strong. So reducing it down in strength is a, another good choice. Overall, this is feeling like a... That's a 10. That's a 10 right there. The Byzantines, like these, these changes are great. I know that the devs internally were looking at a couple of other changes for the Byzantines, and I'm really glad that they didn't come through because it would have pushed Byzantines to S plus tier. Uh, glad that didn't happen. Um, and this here, this is looking very healthy for them. All right, Chinese. Barbican of the Sun now accepts your tax donations. Wonderful. Now, I know people will think, look at this and think this is not a big deal. Can I just explain why I think this is a really big deal? I, I, I need to I need to explain why this is such a big deal. I love the Chinese. You guys know that. Not just the civilization. I also love the culture. It, it's a it's a wonderful culture. Um, but let, let's take a look at say let's do Dry Arabia, um, and let's just put it on explored, and we'll put it on maximum. I'll, I'll do cheats aloud as well, just because. So what am, what am I talking about right now? I'm talking about forward basing. There used to be a big issue with the Chinese, and that was that you couldn't really do forward bases. You need to keep everything condensed because what would happen... Let's just put our cheats on quickly in a jiffy. And we'll get our... We'll just throw a village down here. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take eight villages out here we're going to get rid of the imperial official and we're going to say okay where's the boar on the map so we've got a boar down here and we've got a boar over here and let's say i want to go get this boar so what i'm going to do maybe i'm playing against the delhi sultan i'm going to throw my barbican on the sacred site okay and then i'm going to lure this boar over towards this position i might i might even put that barbican a little bit further away okay and i'm going to bring my imperial official out and what that's going to allow me to do here it, i can now actually drop these taxes off so the boar is now going to that, that, that's probably a little bit too far, but you guys get the point. Uh, so what this also means, though, is I can actually use this as a forward base. So back home, I might have my Imperial Academy just doing its thing. Okay. And maybe I want to get aggressive. We can't reach it. That's all right. Uh, so well, maybe I'm going to put down an archery range. Maybe I'm going to start making Juke Well, guess what? Now I can actually collect the taxes here and drop them off. These taxes are no longer dead. They were, they were, unfortunately, they, they were dead before, uh, but now they're not. Oh, we, we don't have bows for this guy. Run, 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 run. Run, run, run. All right, we're going to try and lure him right to the edge here. I reckon that's about as close as you can probably get. Can you help out, please? Thank you. All right, and so now all of a sudden, we can... Oh, that's right. We've got, we've got Inner Jiffy turned on. So now I can collect my tax, drop it off, and then supervise. And now I can bring out another Imperial official and supervise the archery range. It, it just allows you to, to have this ability to take Borbican and actually do something meaningful with it. So I like this a lot. 10 out of 10. Delhi... Uh, yeah, 10 out of 10. <laughs> Delhi Sultanate. Ghazi Raiders are no longer missing bonus damage versus siege engines and lightweight beams has... Or now has the correct research time in the Imperial Age. Cool. Good changes. 10 out of 10. I, I don't know why I'm giving these guys ratings of 10 out of 10. Like 10 out of 10 just feels too much. 10 out of 10. English. Barkshire Palace weapons are no longer duplicated on their UI. Corrected an issue where one garrison arrow was normal instead of incendiary. 10 out of 10. <laughs> I would have liked an English buff. English are feeling a little bit, a little bit slow at the moment. A little bit low. Um, so I, I would have liked that, but unfortunately not the case here. Um, six out of 10. French. French keeps now cost 10. Why are we buffing the French? All right. No, the French needed a buff anyway. French keeps now cost 10% less stone to build. So just keep in mind that the keeps had their cost increase. Keeps used to cost 800. And now they've been buffed up to, no or, or nerfed technically to 900 stone. So now that's going to go down to 810 for the French, which is a good change. Uh, because they do have that that keep bonus and keep influence range increased by one tile now 
I, I will just say this much, because uh, this is, again, something that we have to always go in and, and do and play with and touch and feel and see exactly how it feels like. We'll put ourselves in age three as well. We've got all of our cheats allowed. So when it came to putting down French buildings, they were always put down in a very specific way if you were inclined to do that. And for me as a person with autism and obsessive compulsive disorder, I was inclined to do that. So what, what would that look like? So I, I'll just put down a uh, town center to replicate the first landmark, which is going to be your school of cavalry. Uh, and then from there, you would put down your stable here and your archery range like this. Uh, and it would always be in a very specific um, way. So you would go, you'd do it four, 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 four across. And then in the middle, you would put your keep and your keep would provide influence to all of these buildings perfectly. Now that's going to change. Uh, it, it means that if we take a look at the influence, so the influence, it it's... So it's not one tile that it provides influence to, it's to two tiles. So that's going to go up to three. So what that means... Oh, see, this is going to be... It, I think it doesn't really change... Let's put in a Jiffy on. Because with these, so... If, if, you, if you were going to put it down like this, right, you, you could... You can always you can always get eight in here, okay? Like you can you can get eight in here every single time. But let's delete and get rid of these guys. You can get twelve if you do it the way that I showed you. So if you go like that, you can get twelve in. So that'll be eleven because we're missing one over here. Uh, but let's delete these. Are we going to see people go to the extent of doing this? Uh, probably not. So I, I think real this this doesn't this doesn't buff people that are trying to take advantage of it because that that will come out to here, right? Out to this spot. And yeah, I I, I think basically what this does is is it just you know you know those people who just put down like a keep over here or something and then they're like okay well I've thrown down a keep now I'm just going to put down my archery rangers and then they just do this like it's just going to mean that a couple more of those archery rangers actually pick up the the, the buff that that's essentially it I don't think it really changes the French too much on it from a balance perspective it basically just means that your your buildings if you throw them down in a jiffy or in a pinch that they're going to be affected so I think that's a good change it's, it's one of those quality of life things uh holy Roman empire oh that's a 10 Holy Roman Empire. Marching drills is now a civilization bonus and is granted for free at the start of the game. It no longer affects prelates. Wow. Inspired warriors now increase the move speed of prelates. Inspired warriors is the one from the mosque, right? Or the, um, the cathedral monastery. Inspired warriors. Prelates can inspire military units, improving their armor by plus one and damage by 15. So I'm assuming that when you research inspired warriors, it, it just increases the movement speed of the prelate rather than having to buff themselves to get that movement speed. Prelate inspiration rage increased by one tile and mine work palace bonus increased from 40 to 50% cost and research time. Okay, okay, all right. This is good. This is good. The, I think the Giga Chads are going to like this a lot. So what have we got here? So marching drills is a Civ bonus. So this is great because all of a sudden it means I don't have to get a blacksmith as early anymore to be relevant. It means against civilizations like the French where I want to open up with a barracks and get spears out that my spears are going to be a little bit better on the defense. So that's a good change. It's one less thing that I have to worry about. This is, this is a good change. Inspired Warriors now increases the movement of speed of Prelates. Um, I think this is pretty much always a standard pickup for the HRE anyway, so that's fine. Uh, inspiration range increased by one tile. Another really good change. It helps them out in the early game, especially, but also in the late game. Uh, that That's that's decent. And Mindwork Palace, 40% to 50%. Uh, I'm still not going to go for the Mindwork Palace. I, I think Beastie said it best when he said you could put that to 100%. I still wouldn't go for it because the Arkan is just so much better. I don't know if Beastie actually said that. It's, it's, it, that's one of those quotes that we just like we put to Beastie. It's, you know, how uh, we, we sometimes attribute quotes to, I don't know, like France is bacon. France is bacon. Anyway, uh, that's a 10. That's a 10. Japanese. Castle of the Crow issue corrected where projectiles would be blocked when attacked from certain angles. Good change. Castle of the Crow, help text, now explains that bonus stone is reduced compared to food, gold, and wood. 
good change. Previously missing, Tawara Takazuki, Takazaiku, and Fudosashi Economy Pips now appear. Is this for caster mode? Is this for caster mode? I, I can only feel like this is for caster mode. What does it mean by economy pips? I, I'm, I'm tempted to Google pips right now, but picture in picture? Pictures? Pictures in pigs? No, I, I got no idea. I, I think this is caster mode. Are they really updating caster mode? I don't, nah, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. If they are. Look, if, if you are, I just want to say, you could have also got the blacksmith upgrades, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just putting it out. Like, I'm going to take it, but please, sir, may I have some more because the blacksmith upgrades also don't work for the Japanese because <laughs> they got unique blacksmith upgrades. Oh, gosh. All right. Uh, let's, uh, I'll give this one, I'll give this one an eight just because they missed the blacksmith upgrades. But thank you. Thank you. I, I do really appreciate this. I, I'm on it, man. If, if you if you gave me like the tiniest little bit like this for caster mode, I'm so happy. I'm like, wow, wow. All right, Joan of Arc. Consecrate help text now updates after researching ordnance company. That's a 10. Mongols. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Uvu stone income in the dark age reduced. They're nerfing Mongols. Get out of here. The, I thought the devs were Mongol mains. Moving building rotation rate reduced so that they do not instantly snap when changing directions. Okay. Hagenet Palace. Rus Knights now properly use Poleaxe. Nice little buff there. Horse Archers now properly use the Gallop ability. Nest of Bees units. Nest of Bees units now receive the additional barrels upgrade. Prayer Tents no longer grant vision on pre-placement after researching monastic shrines. Fixed an issue where units could get trapped in a Mongol landmark when its owner was eliminated. And a crash relating to the Silver Tree landmark has been fixed. Allies of a Mongol player can now set the silver tree as a trade destination while it's packed up and traders will only move to it when it's unpacked. So it, it looks very, very scary, but overall, this isn't a huge change to the Mongols. The main the main difference you're going to notice is slightly less uh, spearmen. I think that's the big one um, in, in, the, in the early game. And I would love to see how much this actually affects the numbers, right? Like if we were to go take a look at a Mongol game, how much does this actually change them? Because it, it's probably... Can we... Let's just check. If an Uvu takes 15 seconds to build, it probably takes about 10 seconds to get there. So let's call it, just for conservative sake, 30 seconds. So 30 seconds into the game, you start producing your 70 stone per minute. And then for your Spearman, if you want to get double production of Spearman, you need to pay 80 stone. So you're basically waiting... Before you would have to wait 60 seconds, so to 90 seconds to get that double production. Now you're waiting a little bit longer. I think this is a good change and it reduces the power of the Mongols in the early game. And it might not seem like a lot, but just reducing the impact the Mongols have in the early game can really change the way that the game develops. And so while it might not seem like much, I do think this is quite a big change. So overall, I think this is good because the Mongols have been strong for a couple of years and this is an important change that needed to happen. So really, let's just hope they didn't miss the Rus. Order of the Dragon. Arkham Chapel bonus increased from 10% to 15%. You're telling me they got a 50% bonus? Hey, th this, this is actually is good now. Th this is overpowered now. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it here first. Order of the Dragon, absolutely broken. Uh, Minework Palace increased from 40 to 50%. Wonderful. Golden Caress cost increased. They're, nerf <laughs> They're nerfing Minework. <laughs> Zornhau cost increased. Bodkin Bolts cost increased. <laughs> they nerfed Bodkin Bolts. Dude, they nerfed the shitty. <laughs> Who's going to go mine work now? Dude, no one's going to go mine work. I guess it's got the 50% research, look, the 50% reduction. Does, uh, sure, why not? Oh, that's so funny. Corrected gilded hand cannons, missing projectile and muzzle effects. I, I felt like that was a design choice. Anyway, that's a 10. If I didn't mention it, that's a 10 as well. Ottomans. Okay, okay, okay. All right, okay, okay. All right. Uh, hold on, Ottoman bots. Don't type your angry messages just yet. Let's read what they say. Dude, the Ottoman bots are so funny, dude. I'm not even kidding you. When I did those team games with Fitz where I was playing the Ottomans, holy shit, man. I'm not even kidding you. Like every video had like 12 comments from this one guy. Like, Ottoman, this is... Uh, uh, Drungo, this is a terrible display of the Ottomans. You're a Conqueror 3 player playing up against a Platinum player. How dare you? 
How dare, how dare you say that the Ottomans are overpowered? Okay. Okay, mate. Calm down. Great Bombard health reduced from 350 to 300. Eat it. Suck it. Suck it, Ottoman bot. Uh, Great Bombard ranged armor. Yeah, I thought, come on, man. Is this, this is on top of the other buff that they got? Vizier experience requirements for each level. Inc get wrecked, Ottoman bots, dude. Oh, God. 60, 80, 120, 200, 320. 60, 100. So it's a nerf to level two. Is it a buff to level three? Oh, no, because these are additive, right? Like, this is not... It's not stacking up. So it's not, like, 80 in between. So before it was, like, 60, then 80, then 120, then 200. Now it's 60, then 100, then 150, then 240, then 320. So the final point still comes at the same time. It's just those points in the middle. That's a pretty big nerf, because that can mean, like, your timings, uh, such as Janissary Company, could be a little bit off here for a castle timing and a castle defense. And a, and a fast Imperial as well, because you need that Janissary Company timing. So this is a pretty big nerf to fast Imperial and a slight nerf to fast castle. But on only a slight nerf to fast castle that's playing, that's trying to go for fast Imperial. Still kind of a nerf to fast castle. Anyway, military school production speed reduced from 4.5x to 5x the standard production rate. Get fucking wrecked. <laughs> Get wrecked, you nerds, dude. It is... Clap, clap. That is a 10. No, that is an 11, dude. That's an 11 right there. You know you know when you see an 11, right? Like, you, you just... You admire and you just look in and you're like, that should not be legal. That's what I'm looking at right now. Like, this is... Wow. Like, those curves on the Ottoman numbers just shouldn't exist. They're just... Beautiful. What's your ad? Uh... <laughs> Roos, let's get to it. Hunting cabin. Build time increase from 25 to 35 seconds. Get, sit down, Roos players. Boyar's fortitude in co cost increased. Sit down, Roos players. Corrected an issue where horse archers would not maintain the amount of precision. Damn it. Okay. It's a slight nerf, but similarly to the Mongol nerf, this is something that you will notice every single game you play against Roos or you play as the Roos. Let me explain. 25 seconds to 35 seconds might not seem like a lot. But what this will most likely mean is we now see Roost players putting an extra villager on their hunting cabins, which is going to mean their age up is going to be slightly slower. Or it's going to mean if they don't put that extra villager out on their hunting cabin, that their first scout that comes out of the hunting cabin is a little bit slower. 10 seconds to be exact, which could be the difference between 40 bounty or 50 bounty or however much bounty it's going to be but in that 10 seconds so this could be a big difference it could be the difference between two or three sheep um and so as a result this does have fallout for the rest of the game because if you make it to 250 bounty then all of a sudden a whole lot of options open up for you whereas if you don't if you can't get your wheelbarrow then you're going to have an issue anyway overall these are good changes to the roost um probably n n nowhere near enough right like kremlin needs to be nerfed that that's a matter of fact it, the kremlin is so good um th this is this is not a 10 this is like this is like a a seven or an eight uh anyway ongoing known issues sure uh investigation community reported okay cool what's on the horizon coming up we're working on the next update and look forward to sharing more soon cool all right awesome okay Ladies and gentlemen, this has been your patch review. Overall, this has been an incredible patch. The balance changes are minute, but very correct, right? Like they're 100% they're in the right direction for everything. Uh, the developers have not missed here. They have absolutely nailed it. I think the biggest thing coming away from this is if you thought Age of Empires 4 was fun now, you just wait until next week because not only are your victory objectives going to be condensed ladies and gentlemen not only are you going to be able to play with your friends over on xbox which is going to mean that your queues are going to be a little bit shorter it's going to mean that your friends list is going to be a little bit longer but you are also going to be able to play with me in quick match in the brand new dominion game mode is it is it called dominion it says it's a new dominion win condition um i wonder what they've labeled it i, I guess it's just free for all uh but yeah, I am going to be playing the hell out of this. Um, as I said, there will be an announcement forthcoming shortly. Make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that one. Uh, it's it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. 
uh, we are about to get very, very serious when it comes to free for all. And I hope that, uh, I mean, with the leaderboards, it just makes it so much better, right? Because now we can actually see, you know, this guy is ranked seven on the FFA leaderboards. We just, we know he is, he, he is some traitorous scum, that sort of thing. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this patch review. I'm so excited for the future of Age of Empires 4 because this looks absolutely perfect. Anyway, the devs have nailed it here. Thank you guys. You've done wonderfully. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one.